good morning students i welcome you all for the civics lecture chapter number 2 the indian parliament in previous lecture we have seen the constitution of india has created the parliament of india and the legislature is called as a parliament okay president is an inseparable part of the parliament but he cannot participate in the discussion of either of the house of the parliament in a parliament there are two houses that is lok sabha and rajya sabha Lok Sabha is the first and the lower house of the parliament and it represents the people because the people are electing the members of Lok Sabha and the tenure of Lok Sabha is of 5 years there are maximum 552 members in a Lok Sabha there are some seats reserved in Lok Sabha for the scheduled caste and scheduled tribes and in case there is no representative from anglo indian community then the president appoints two members from that community then we also studied about the rajya sabha rajya sabha is the second and the upper house of the parliament the members are indirectly elected here the people are not electing the members of rajya sabha okay it gives representation to the 29 states and the seven union territories then the members work as a representative of the constitution state so they are the representative of the specific states the total members of rajya sabhas are 250 and in that 238 members are elected from the constitutional states and the union territories and the remaining 12 members are appointed by the president from the different fields like science then sports social work literature arts etc rajya sabha cannot be dissolved completely hence it is called as a permanent house one third members of the total members of rajya sabha who have completed their tenure of 6 years after every 2 years they get retire and the new members were elected and if anyone want to contest the election of rajya sabha then that person should complete the 30 years of age and he should be the citizen of india the members of lok sabha and the rajya sabha are known as member of parliament that is mp then we also studied about the functions of the parliament the function of the parliament is the formation of the law then the second one is control over the council of ministers so they have to keep the control over the council of minister and they have to formulate the laws and that is the function of the parliament now today we are going to study about amendments of the constitution amendments means the changes okay so the parliament decided whether to make any amendment amendments with changes to the indian constitution so the who decide they have to make the changes in the indian constitution the parliament only decide whether they have to do the changes in the indian constitution or not the constitution amendment bill is considered to be an important bill so the constitution amendment so whatever changes have done in the constitution and that bill is considered is very important bill the parliament discuss why the amendment is required and decide whether to accept it or not so the parliament did discuss over it why we have to make the changes okay and if they think that changes are required they are very important then they decided to make the changes and they accept the it and they make the changes according to that the constitution mention various ways of amending the constitution even in that constitution it is given how to do the various changes in the constitution and for that they have to follow the following things first one few provisions in indian constitutions are amended by simple majority of the parliament so they can make the few provisions in the indian constitution okay so they can make the few changes in the indian constitution by the simple majority of the parliament so they have to take the majority from the parliament and they can make the changes in the constitution second thing is that some provisions require special majority two third of the parliament there are some provisions if the parliament if they want to make some changes in the constitution then they require two third majority of the parliament so the majority they require more for some provisions third one is few provisions are amended by special majority of parliament plus consent from more than half of the constituent states so if they want to make 
some few other provisions then they require the special majority from the parliament Par all the peoples in the parliament they should agree plus even they require the more than half constitutional states that we have a constitution states in india how many states are there 29 states are there so more than half of the state should agree with this then only they can make the changes in the constitution so these are the following ways of amending the constitution so first one is if few provisions they want to make in the indian constitution are amendment very few changes if they want to make then they require a simple majority in the parliament if some provision they want to make then they require the special majority that is two third majority of the parliament and if they want some other provisions they want to or they want to make other changes then they require the special majority plus they require the more than half of the state should agree with this then only they can make the changes so from this we come to know that anyhow they cannot make the changes in the constitution they have to take the majority from the parliament and also from the states also now next is speaker of lok sabha mr om birla is the present speaker of lok sabha in the very first meeting after the election of lok sabha the members of lok sabha elect the speaker and the deputy speaker from among themselves so when the first meeting held after the election of lok sabha so they appoint the speaker and the deputy speaker from themselves lok sabha functions under the guidance and the control of the speaker and the lok sabha the functions under the guidance and control of the speaker as the name suggest lok sabha represent the citizen and the speaker represent the lok sabha lok means people so that is what is a citizen it represents the citizen and the speaker represent the lok sabha now let's see the functions of the speaker after getting elected as a speaker he or she has to conduct the business of the house in an unbiased manner so he has to control or he has to conduct the business of the house in unbiased manner unbiased means without favoring any party or any person or impartial way he conduct the meetings of the house or in hindi we called it as a nipaksha he is not taking any one side okay so he has to remain unbiased whenever he is conducting the business of the house lok sabha members have some privileges and rights as the representative of the people these are taken care by the speaker so all the rights and the privileges are taken care by the speaker apart from this the speaker has to maintain the decorum and dignity of the house so he takes care that the rules and practice of the house is respected and all members respect each other as well he also interpret or declare the rules of daily functioning of the house and everyone should work accordingly so these are the functions of lok sabha speaker again we will repeat the first one is he has to conduct the business of the house in an unbiased manner means he don't have to take any one side second one is the lok sabha member have some rights and privileges as a representative of the people and he is taking care of the rules and the practices of the house which is respected and all the members of the lok sabha will respect each other he also interpret or declare the rules of daily functioning of the house and everyone works accordingly he decide as to when a member shall speak or as how long he or she shall speak now let's move forward the chairman of rajya sabha mr venkaiya naidu is the present chairman of rajya sabha so students the vice president of india is the ex officio chairman of rajya sabha so mr venkaiya naidu is a vice president of india also and he is the chairman of rajya sabha also the chairman exercise a control over the functioning of rajya sabha so as in lok sabha the speaker control the functions of lok sabha so here the chairman he controls over the functioning of rajya sabha now another function of rajya sabha is or the rajya sabha chairman is 
to maintain the discipline in the house so whenever any discussion is going on in the house that time he takes care of the discipline now the second function is to facilitate the discussion so he facilitate the discussion in the house it means he assist each party individually and prepare them to have a conversation by giving them chance to speak and give their views on the bill which is presented in the house so he is giving members a chance to speak in the house and that is a function of the chairman of rajya sabha so the chairman of rajya sabha is also the vice president of india and his function is to control over the functioning of rajya sabha then the second function is to maintain the discipline in the rajya sabha or in the house and the third one is facilitate discussion and giving members to chance to speak etc now we are going to move to the next that is how does the parliament makes laws in our country the parliament is empowered to make laws means the parliament is having all the powers to make the laws and to formulate them a certain system has been adopted to formulate the laws they have adopted the certain system and this system is known as law making process so in the beginning they are preparing a rough draft or a outline and this draft or outline is known as draft proposal of the law or bill of law so it mean it is a rough plan so there are two types of bill that are primarily introduced in the house of the parliament so in the house of the parliament they introduce a two type of bill the one is money bill and the second one is ordinary bill if you are going to see in the understand it the bracket is given after this so you will understand the both the house the lok sabha as well as rajya sabha have some sets of rights but there are certain rights that are enjoyed by the lok sabha and are not available in the rajya sabha and there are certain rights so rajya sabha enjoy but they are not having in lok sabha for example bills related to the taxes or related to the finance bills related to the finance are considered as the money bill and such bills are introduced and passed in lok sabha rajya sabha has limited powers with respect to the money bills so who is having the power over the money bill the lok sabha rajya sabha is having very limited power over the money bill so money bill is always presented in lok sabha now let's move forward and see the process in order to make the bill into an act or law it has to undergo in the following process in the first one is the first reading second reading third reading bill in the other house and the president assent now we will study them one by one first reading the minister of the consent department ministry or member of the parliament presents the bill and briefly explains its nature while presenting it this is called as a first reading it means the minister of consent department or the member of the parliament when they present the bill that time they explain briefly its nature while presenting it and this is called the first reading then the second process is second reading there are two stages of second reading in the first stage the objective of the process bill or the aim of this bill are discussed and the member in the house express their opinion on it so whenever they are doing or whenever they are proposing this bill that time the aims and objectives are discussed and the members in the exp- in the house they express their opinion on it the supporters of the bill give favorable opinions while the opponents discuss the defects and faults in the bill so the one who is going to support this bill they give their favorable opinion the one who is against or one who is going to oppose the bill they always discuss about the defects and the faults in the bill after the discussion within the house 
as per the requirement the bill is sent to the committee of the house so once it is done after all the discussion this bill is sent to the committee of the house the committee report consisting of instruction recommendation is sent to the house in order to make the bill flawless so after sending this bill to the committee the committee they give some instruction or recommend some changes in order to make flawless means the without any fault okay or without any mistake that is called as a flawless so in order to make that bill flawless without any mistake the committee suggest some recommendation or they give the instruction now the second phase is the second reading begins in this phase the bill is discussed clause by clause so when the second in the second phase of the second reading they discuss this bill clause by clause thoroughly the member can also suggest changes in the stage after this voting is taken in the house so these are the two stages of the second reading the first stage is the objective of the proposal or the aim of this proposal bill are discussed and the member in the house they express their opinion and the second stage is they discuss this bill clause by clause and, and in this stage also the member can give their suggestion and after this after this lengthy discussion the voting is take place in the house now we are going to move to the third reading so during this third reading the bill is discussed briefly again voting is taken for approving the bill so they take the voting to approve this bill if the bill gets an assent by the required majority then the bill is considered as a pass by the house if the majority of the people are favorable with this bill or if they are going to support this bill then that bill is going to pass the bill undergoes the same procedure even in the other house so in the other house also the same procedure is followed after getting an approval by both the houses the bill is further sent for assent by the president now which are the both houses lok sabha and rajya sabha so once they get the approval from this both the houses the bill is further sent for the assent of the president assent means for the agreement whether the president is agree or not if there occurs a difference of opinion between lok sabha and rajya sabha over a specific bill the future of this bill is decided in a joint meeting of both the houses if there is some differences in the opinion of lok sabha and rajya sabha then further the future of that bill is decided in the joint meeting of both the houses so both the houses will have a joint meeting and there they will discuss about this bill or in short the future of the bill is decided in a joint meeting of both the houses that is rajya sabha and lok sabha if they have any difference of opinion about the bill after the final assent as in as i told you assent means agreement or agree or give approval okay and the signature of the president the bill is converted into a law and the law is made so once the bill is approved from both the houses that bill is sent to the president once the president is approved or when the president is agree for that bill and he is going to make the signature then that bill is converted into a law and a law is made without the president signature we cannot say that law is approved so the president signature is very important in this way we can see that making a law is a lengthy process and discussion and deliberation are very important for this now we are going to see the bracket which is given know this too every year in the month of february the finance minister presents the national budget to lok sabha so they are giving the national budget to the lok sabha in the month of february every year the state legislature also follow the same procedure of law making as in the parliament the bill is passed by the state legislature can become a law only after it receive the assent of of the governor so the state legislature they also follow same procedure of law making 
and the bill will pass by the state legislature can become a law only after it receive the agreement or the approvement of the governor or when the governor is going to do the signature that time only that bill is going to become a law so here is the end of the lesson